This paper and presentation is intended to be an introduction, specifically an introduction to the process of conducting or reviewing a transient search model. If you are one of the few water hammer enthusiasts out there, this presentation will seem quite basic. For the majority, however, this presentation will hopefully guide you to discern your role in the process. A few things are certain. One, surge modeling remains to be a specialized task, even in 2020. It is still not part of a typical college curriculum, and even worse, it's not even a part of a typical design process for piping. If you work with a team that routinely analyzes a system for surge, I commend you. Second, surge exists in all systems. It's never a matter of when, rather it's always a matter of to what degree. This will be discussed more in the coming slides. Lastly, surge is quite complex, especially the more in-depth you study it. Thurley, a renowned surge expert, says it best when he wrote, the pursuit of a better understanding of surge phenomena leads almost inevitably to more complex equations and more sophisticated solutions. A situation which is in marked contrast to the needs of the average practicing engineer who prefers design charts and simple, although approximate, laws and equations. Let's start with a simple definition. What is surge? A transient pressure wave, also known as surge, simply put, is an acoustic pressure wave generated by a change in fluid velocity. It can be a pressure wave that initially increases the fluid system pressure, or a pressure wave that initially decreases the fluid system pressure. The wave begins its point of travel at the location of the initial velocity change. For example, if a valve position is changed, thus changing the fluid flow, a surge wave will be induced at both the inlet and outlet of the valve. The first steps towards understanding the physics behind surge is to first visualize the type of pressure wave that is being induced. Surge is actually a sound wave. It moves through a liquid-filled piping system the same way our voices are carried through the air, by means of compressing or bumping molecules. If you're a fan of old western movies, you've probably seen cowboys put their ear to the railroad tracks to see if a train is coming. The tracks themselves are not moving per se, however, on a molecular level, a pressure wave or sound wave is being carried through the tracks from the train to the cowboy. Surge waves travel through the liquid piping systems in the same manner. The speed at which they travel is the speed of sound, which is mostly dependent on how elastic the fluid and piping system is. The more rigid the system is, the faster the pressure wave will travel. In a typical steel piping system carrying a liquid close in nature to water, the wave speed can easily exceed 4,000 feet per second. Once grasping the concept of wave speed, wave period is not so hard to also grasp. Essentially, wave period is the time it takes a pressure wave to travel out and bounce back. Imagine a simple steel line 40 feet long from the pump to a valve. If the valve is closed, a pressure wave will be induced. Assuming a 4,000 feet per second wave speed, the pressure wave will take 0.02 seconds to travel out and bounce back. If the line is longer, say a thousand feet long, the wave period will also be longer, a half a second. The reason wave period is important is because reflected pressure waves can, in many cases, bring relief to the original pressure condition before the overall velocity change is complete. A high pressure wave can be reflected backwards as a negative pressure wave, mitigating the series of high pressure waves that are still being induced by the valve before it is completely closed. This is absolutely one of the more complex components of surge, and I would encourage you to seek out more detail in the references noted at the end of this presentation. Prior to the pressure waves superimposing upon themselves, the initial pressure rise or drop can be calculated by the equation noted here, commonly called the Joukowsky equation. 
By this equation, you can see that the pressure rise or fall is a factor of the wave speed and the extent of the velocity change. Whether or not the pressure rises or falls depends on the direction of the velocity change relative to the inducer. For instance, in case study number one, a gasoline additive is flowing through a 4-inch carbon steel line roughly 2200 feet long. The quick closing valve induces a velocity decrease that causes a pressure spike at the inlet of the valve and a pressure fall at the outlet of the valve. As a side note, you might notice at the inlet of the valve, the pressure spikes to 200 psi, then continues to climb to around 260 psi before dropping. The first pressure rise is associated with the Joukowsky equation. The second rise is associated to a phenomenon called line pack. We won't go into detail about this here, however I do want to point out how important it is to have computer surge modeling capabilities. There is much potential to miss the mark if an engineer were to rely solely on the Joukowsky equation. Now that we've covered the high level physics behind surge, let's discuss the computer modeling process. For those new to surge, it most often comes as a surprise how much input data is needed to complete a surge model, as well as how tedious the modeling process can be. Shown to the left is a list of the most common data inputs used in a computer surge model. Shown to the right is an example of how critical it is to have accurate data. In this case study number two, a water system within a power plant is modeled. Initially, no valve data was provided to the modeler. The modeler was able to convey through comparison plots the varying pressure impact the valve characteristics actually have. After building the computer surge model, the next step the modeler will take is to run the model in steady state and verify the normal operating flow and pressure conditions match those provided. This is a crucial step in ensuring the accuracy of the model. In some cases, it becomes quite obvious when a mistake is made, especially when the output data is quite off what is expected. Depending on the modeling software, there are various ways of reviewing and checking the input data. In this case study number three, the modeler was able to use the software search functionality to quickly see that one of the nodes in the model had a zero foot elevation instead of 500 feet. Sometimes the mistake is this obvious. Other times it is necessary to look at the model in tabular form to verify the accuracy. After verifying steady state conditions, it is necessary to define the worst case surge initiators. Valve closures and unplanned pump trips tend to be the most common initiators, but they are certainly not the only ones. Once establishing the plausible cause of a surge event, the modeler will define the other critical operating parameters such as fluid type, operating scenarios, as well as comparing methods of surge protection. As you can see here in case study number four, varying only a few parameters can lead to a rather large set of case scenarios. One additional parameter, say a low pressure and a high pressure condition, would double the number of case scenarios listed here. Case study number five demonstrates the effort involved to ensure a versatile surge solution across all case scenarios. In this example, fuel is transported through a 30-inch carbon steel line 3,000 feet long. Computer surge modeling was used to first determine the surge pressure risk for both a controlled and emergency shutdown scenario. Pressures were deemed unacceptable for both scenarios. In the controlled closure scenario, the pressure drops to a vacuum condition and vapor pockets form, eventually causing cavitation. In the quick closure scenario, the steep and sudden high pressures are well outside the allowable system limits. The modeler then begins the process of determining a solution that would mitigate the surge pressures for both scenarios. One solution analyzed was surge vessels, one at the pump and one upstream of the valve. 
However, the preliminary sizes specified for the quick closure scenario were not suitable for the controlled valve closure scenario. Further adjustment to the size and precharge pressure of the vessels allowed the modeler to find a solution that would appropriately mitigate the surge pressures for both shutdown scenarios. The final stage of computer surge modeling consists of summarizing the structure and results of the model. This is a tedious step in and of itself. To the left is a typical outline of a surge analysis. To the right are key figures that should be included. The first being the overall structure of the model, including key input data. The second set of figures to include are the pressure profiles. These plots should show the minimum and maximum pressures along a line. This is a quick and easy way to see the overall surge risk and understand the problem points within a system. The third set of graphs should depict pressure over time at the critical locations of the system, such as downstream of the check valves, locations that experience the lowest or highest pressures, upstream of a valve that is closing, etc. In regards to valve operation, certain softwares can plot the opening and closing of valves along with flow, including airflow in the case of air vacuum valves. If a surge vessel is part of a solution, it is important to understand the liquid volume change within that surge vessel, as well as the flow velocity in and out of the vessel. If you are a stakeholder in a project tasked with reviewing a surge analysis, there are a few very important questions to seek answers to. Hopefully, you are looking at a report with various tables and plots providing you with these answers. The first reviewing question to ask is, has the modeler accurately captured the system details? While not every detail may be included in the report, key details should be listed and, at the very least, there should be a plot to reference and verify steady state conditions. The second reviewing question to ask is, were all the worst case scenarios captured? Some modelers tend to only select the highest flow condition as the worst case. However, the reviewer should be aware a solution based only on one operating condition could be quite problematic for another, especially with a broad steady state operating pressure envelope. The third question a reviewer will ask is in regards to risk what are the minimum and maximum transient pressures with no protection, and what is the likelihood the worst case scenarios will occur. The last and probably most sought after question is what solution is recommended. Specifically, the reviewer should take caution as to the size and placement of the surge solution. A common mistake is to miss the importance of the modeled location of a specific surge mitigation device. For example, a surge vessel placed 100 feet away from the pump is not as likely to protect the pump as well as one placed 10 feet away. The reviewer should also verify the solution recommended is appropriate for all case scenarios. While many surge events go unnoticed, they are in fact happening in all fluid piping systems. The effort to unveil the risk and design for surge protection can seem daunting. However, the evolving tools for computer surge analysis enable stakeholders to more easily assess their fluid piping systems. Ultimately, the more informed we are, the more reliable our fluid piping systems will be. Thank you for your time today.